Hey, Justin here with Stay at Home Dads Podcast. Welcome to the place I talk about many different topics from kids, marriage, family, plus a lot of other things that I find interesting and hopefully you find relatable and interesting as well. Anyways, thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. I know I say it every week, but I appreciate you hanging out with me for 20 to 30 minutes. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed those last two episodes from the past couple weeks. It was really nice for me just talking to someone else, hearing different opinions, different stories. I thought that was pretty cool. Plus, you all got to hear something other than just my droning voice for the whole show. So I imagine that was a positive as well, right? But I'll try to continue doing that. I think that's really what this show needs is to have deeper conversations with a lot of different people. And uh, I don't know, hopefully I can just consistently provide that to you guys. All right, what is going on? Well, it's voting time this week, or at least it was on Tuesday. So did you get out there? Did you do your civic duty? Did you cast your ballot? I did, but I will be 100% honest. Voting is a pain in the ass. Totally, 100%, I did not have a good time voting. Sure, the act of voting, easy, right? You watch some slam ads on TV, you go to a voting site, you check some boxes, done. So, simple. It's From that aspect, it's pretty easy. But if you want to really know who you're voting for, then it becomes, I think, a little bit of a bigger deal. I spent hours, literally hours, researching, reading, and trying to find information on all these damn candidates from state stuff all the way down to local school board stuff. And yeah, no joke. I spent hours doing this up until the night before the election, probably three days of on and off just researching and reading. And some of those local little candidates are not easy to find information on their talking points or their issues. I ended up diving into Facebook pages and combing through posts, just trying to find out what those things were. So yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was fun. It was a pain. And I imagine a lot of people don't do that. I just do it because I try to learn. I try to read up on people and make the best choice that I can. And it's hard. Some issues from one candidate I like, and then I keep reading, and then there's some that I just hate and I can't get over. And then another candidate I'm, I'm reading, and they've got a great record, and I like what I hear, like what I'm reading. And then some little dumb thing pops up, and I just, it doesn't sit well with me, I don't like it, and it totally changes my mind. So it's just kind of interesting how it all works. And I don't know, you can say it's a waste of time, you can say it's not a waste of time. I mean, when it's all said and done, candidates I voted for, some won, some lost, but typically it's over thousands or hundreds of votes. So did it really make a difference that I voted personally? I mean, I feel good that I did it, but did it make a difference? I don't know. I mean, I know we can't have that mentality. We all have to go do our part and it takes everyone to make a difference, right? Oh, Jesus, that sounded sounded like a politician talk right there. It takes everyone to make a difference. Jeez. And that shit gets me too. All these people speaking in taglines and slogans. It all just sounds good. It's all these feel-good things. It doesn't really mean anything. There's no substance there. It takes a village. We gotta do what's right for America. And there's never any action. It's just sound good stuff. And the commercials, oh God, the commercials really, the slam ads, so great, right? I don't know. It just seems so dirty when you hear that. I would like to see a different kind of slam ad, one that really shit talks each other, you know? In 1994, Barbara cooked a ribeye medium well. Can you believe that? And she doesn't even know how to cook a turkey. A little Thanksgiving reference in there. Or, I don't know, in 2007, Mark peed in a pool. And didn't tell anyone. That's the kind of slam ad I want to see. I think that would be kind of funny. Mark also didn't change the oil in his car for three years. Can you trust someone like that to run your district? I'm just having some fun here. Kathy cheated on her husband while on vacation. (laughs) You know, I I don't know. But it's just crazy we can do that. 
I think it would make it more entertaining and kind of funny. And I might want to know if Kathy cheated on her husband. These are all fake people, by the way, but that might go to her integrity, right? It's all about name recognition, though, really. Walking into the library where I voted, all you see are sign after sign after sign, just littered everywhere. Every two feet, there's a sign stuck in the ground. There's a campaign person shaking a sign in your face with the goal being that you will get in there without having researched a damn thing. You won't have looked up any candidates. And as you walk by all these signs, you're just going to remember one of these signs you saw, one of these names on a sign 27 seconds ago before you voted. And since our attention spans are burned out from all the social media, we're just going to remember that name that we just saw. And we're going to poke that button for that guy or gal. And then we're going to walk out patting ourselves on the back that we did our civic duty, but we didn't really make an educated choice. And I mean, I guess you can vote that way by seeing a sign or just a commercial and rolling with that. It's probably better than just rolling down the list of candidates and checking all R's or checking all D's, right? I don't really think that's the right way to do that. And I kind of think that's what's wrong with politics and government today. I mean, sure, there's plenty of bad ideas in politics. We can all agree to that. But there's some good ones, too. At least some, right? From a lot of different people. And I just find it funny how both parties are hoping to have that majority to be able to get what they want done in government and Congress and all that. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of sad when it comes down to that level, just wanting that majority. That just means that they can't get shit done working together. That's, that's all there is to it. Or they have no desire to work with the other quote-unquote side. And I just think it's crazy that we've accepted that and that's okay. I mean, could you imagine going to work wherever it may be and trying to run a successful business and every day you tell half of your coworkers that do the same job as you that their ideas are f***ing stupid or that they're doing it the wrong way and your idea is better or their idea doesn't align with yours and you block them from implementing their their program or their idea or their method vice versa whatever could you imagine that just shut the fuck up carl no one cares about your point how can that be a successful business if that's the way it's operated just i don't know it kind of blows my mind when i put it into a perspective like that And I don't typically talk politics. I haven't really talked politics on this show ever. It's this hot button issue. It's very divisive. And I'm not going to change your mind about any of it. I mean, sure, we can educate each other. Maybe we can open our eyes a little bit to certain issues or certain points of view. But that's really about it. It's like trying to get a Ford guy to buy a Chevrolet. It's just not going to happen. It just isn't going to happen. No matter how much you talk about it, no matter how awesome it is, it's not going to happen. And I know that's a really basic metaphor, is that right? But that is what it is. And like I said, I don't don't know enough about politics to really get involved, to have some big debate or big conversation with somebody. I'm just not educated on it. And I think if you really want to see how a candidate is, you have to see how they have voted in the past, see what policies they push, see what they actually do. And not just listen to a talking point on a TV commercial or even reading on a website like I did. That may not even be enough either because anyone can say what they want to do. It's more of what they have done, right? All I know is people aren't really happy. Inflation's high. Gas is high. I think some of these politicians have been in power entirely too long. It's a public service. It's not a career. I don't think you should be in there for 20 years, 30 years, whatever. It's just my opinion. I don't, I don't like it. Another thing I wanted to mention about politics is the whole Biden slash Harris college forgiveness payout. What do you think of that? What is your opinion there? For me, it goes into more of that inflation issue, COVID relief money. You couldn't opt out of that, by the way. And now it's college reimbursement. And all this domestic stimulus has a big effect on our current inflation. I actually went and uh, dug into some interwebs, and according to studentaid.gov, which is actually the website where you apply for this college reimbursement, I guess is what you would call it, it's actually been paused by a federal appeals court. 
some states are contending that the federal government doesn't have the right to just cancel debt on such a large scale without congressional approval. And yeah, I can kind of see that. The website says that there are over 8 million people that are eligible without even having to apply. So the education department already has all their information. They're just going to shoot some checks out and pay off people's you know, student loans. And depending on if you have a Pell Grant or not, you would get 10 or 20 grand. So let's just say on the low side, that's 8 million, 10 grand, that's $80 billion right there. Plus you'll have borrowers that are going to apply for the aid or the relief. So it's gonna be more on top of that. It's kind of crazy. So I can see kind of why some people or states would want to approve that because that's, that's a big fat chunk of money. But I do understand, I do get it. School's expensive. Some people are saddled with these loans. They need some help. They're struggling. They're overwhelmed. But does that mean that we just pass out money? I don't really know the answer to that, but it does intrigue me. All this stuff kind of intrigued me. So here are some fun facts for you. I found some fun facts. In 2020, the average federal student loan debt was $36,000 per borrower and fifty-four dollars for private, private loans. And 45 million borrowers still have student loan debt. 95% of that number are federal loans. And even 20 years after, half of the borrowers still owe twenty grand. It's nuts, right? That's crazy. After 20 years, they still owe $20,000. So in that respect, helping 8 million plus with 10 grand really just seems like a drop in the bucket, right? Some people say it doesn't even make a dent. Some people don't want to do it at all. But is it supposed to just wipe the slate clean for millions and millions of people? I don't know. Another interesting stat that I found was the historical average. So in 2010, the average student loan debt for an undergrad was 15 grand or just over 15 grand right in that area. In 2020, 10 years later, the average was almost $37,000. So the amount has more than doubled in 10 years of student loan debt. Why is that? That, it, that seems crazy to me. Now, looking a bit more here, yes, college tuition has gone up in the past 10 years. What is it, 10 or 20%? According to CNBC, it's 25%. But either way, why is in 10 years the loan amount, the student loan debt has gone up that much? I would assume cost of living then. I mean, school goes up a little bit. Cost of living is going to go up, say, 20% as well. That room and board aspect. I know it's expensive. You know, those 40-year-old cinder block building dorm rooms, shared bathrooms, you know, live in the lap of luxury. Plus that four-star gourmet food. It's got to be almost as expensive as the books, right? And looking at all this data, which I'll link it in the description so you can check it out. It's just it boggles my mind. If I remember right, I got a little bit of aid when I went to college. You filled out a form and you got some a little bit of rebate back, but I didn't take out loans for college. I paid for everything up front every semester. Granted, I only went for two years. I only have an associate's degree and I didn't have to pay for room and board because I lived in a house with my wife. So we don't owe or I don't owe 80,000 freaking dollars or something like that. So I had it pretty lucky, I guess you could say. I worked part-time. I never took a full schedule of classes. So I wasn't overwhelmed in that aspect, but that also means that I didn't rack up a huge bill every semester that I couldn't afford to pay. So that helped me a lot. So maybe these young students don't even think about the repayment right away, or they don't even care. They just kick that can down the road they take out the max so they can live off their loan money. They can travel, you know, that's what all these kids, young people want to do. You know, they want to go see the world and experience life. Sure, it may be fun. Free money, right? Woohoo! But you got to pay that back. Maybe 10 or 20 grand less if, uh, if the Biden-Harris relief goes through and gets through this whole court process. Get your Biden bucks, but I don't know. I just... I don't know the answer. What is the answer? Giving away money isn't really fixing the problem. I mean, okay, say you wipe the debt right now, wipe it out, and then what, what's going to happen? Five years, ten years from now, there's just going to be a whole another slew of people that have racked up more student loan debt, right? 
and they're standing in line waiting for relief to get that slate wiped clean once again. So that's not really the answer. That's like the band-aid on the wound. You don't really take care of the bleeding. You just keep slapping a new gauze pad on it. Like I said, I'm, I don't know politics. I don't know a lot of this shit that I talk about on here all the time. But maybe the start could be some revamping with the colleges themselves and how they charge for their services. So how can a college, a business essentially, have literally no skin in the game when it comes to loaning money or investing in their students? Come to my establishment. Bring a lot of money. And by the way, you can't borrow that money from us. You must go to the government to borrow that money or your bank to borrow that money. Doesn't that sound crazy? Get it from somewhere else. So, let's have colleges foot at least a percentage of the bill. Half of it, maybe? And I'm not saying eat the cost, but I'm saying be their own bank. So, when you loan money, you loan it from the college. I don't know, does that kind of make sense? And then the students have to maybe come up with the rest of the money, whether that be a loan or cash or whatever. And then the schools invest in the student in that aspect. Also stop requiring bullshit classes that are a total waste of time and money. I would like to take basket weaving because it's an elective and I need it to be a more well-rounded citizen. Like, come on. And then when they're done with college, then let's try to get them signed up and lined up with a profitable career so the students can pay back the colleges the money that they borrowed. I mean, what is, what is so hard about that? Why is this such a hard concept to, to take on or understand? Please, someone tell me. Tell me if this is a shit idea or tell me if there's some meat here. I think there is. And I know, I think some colleges are doing this now. I think I saw it a couple years ago actually on the news, but... It's not really a widespread standard. Nobody really talks about it, and I I think it needs to be. Next thing is, I think federal loans should be interest-free. Although with the COVID Relief Act, or whatever they've been calling it the past couple years, that has suspended student loan payments, as well as interest on the loans, at least until the end of 2022. But that's all just temporary. Also, I read that the reason government charges interest rate is to offset the cost of loaning money including inflation, and because loaning money is risky. Okay, so if loaning money is risky, what do you call giving someone ten or $20,000 in loan forgiveness? What, what is that? Okay, loaning money is risky, so you'd rather just write them a check for twenty grand instead of just saying, hey, let's have interest-free loans because the government shouldn't be wanting to make money. And I know it's not a lot. I mean, I know the interest, they're they're low interest loans. I know it's not a ton of money, but still, I think it's a start. I just don't think kids should be penalized to take that, that loan out through the government. And I think that's just something that could easily be done and have an impact on those votes, you know? Like I just talked about voting, since that's why it seems like they try to run around around election time and change things and make things sound so enticing and great, do all this shit is to get people in their corner. That's what I think. All right, last one I'll mention here before I wrap this up, this episode that I don't know what I'm talking about, and it kind of snowballed from talking about voting. But anyways, books, college books. Who remembers, you probably all do, if you went to college, even me in a two-year college, you paid up the ass for books. Why are these things hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, depending on the classes you're taking, for one semester. Another thing I find absolutely mind-blowing is that no one other than the students see a problem with this. The cost of books. Did the cost of book printing explode recently in the past 20 or 30 years? Is the ink they use hand fucking squeezed from ink grapes or something? I don't know. Oh wait, never mind. They just reprint the same book and move the fucking chapters around and give you a new CD so to have that interactive part, right? That's all they do. It's just a freaking scam, and it drives me crazy. Anyways, the cost of books, they need to come down. The cost of books should not be what they are. Where's the oversight committee in that aspect, you know? Books don't change. Math doesn't change. The makeup of cells doesn't really change. Do you know what I mean? Sure, you can sell your books, 
that book you spent $140 on, you can take it back to the bookstore at the end of the semester and get 20 bucks. Yay, $20, right? But you don't feel good about it. Book rental. I guess there's a book rental too, I suppose. All I know is college can't be free. It just can't be. It needs to have some value and the government just can't step in and continue to pay for people's educations. And I know that's not entirely what that was. 10 and 20 grand, like other people have said, is like, that's not going to pay my loans. But still, I don't think that's the answer. And I'm not shitting on college either. I'm not doing that at all. My wife went to a four-year university. I know a lot of people that, that go to college and it's very beneficial for them. It's needed in a lot of cases. But I think we also could put some emphasis on technical schools for people, trade schools as well. I mean, if my girls want to go to a big four-year college, awesome, so be it, let's go. If they want to go to a trade school, all right, let's go to trade school. If they want to have a mobile van and sell donuts, you know, and that's their dream, chase your dream, girl, it's awesome. Do it up, and if it doesn't work out, come back, regroup, we'll figure it out. We just need to make sure that we educate our kids on wise financial choices. Talk to them about loans. Talk to them about borrowing, how it works, how it, how it, how you pay for it, what all the details are. Also to save for college, which yes, we have little college funds for both my girls. So we're putting a little bit of money into there and don't just go into college thinking someone's going to pay it for you or the government's going to step in and give you some subsidy. Like think about it a little differently. Remember, I am not uh, well-versed in any of this stuff. I don't know politics that well. I don't even know college stuff that well. I only went to a community college. I've got, I've got a two-year degree. That's it. I don't have a lot of experience with universities and how they work and even loans. Like I said, I didn't take out loans, so I don't even know how a lot of that works. So hopefully I gave a decent perspective and had some interesting insights or tips or whatever. Anyway, so that's all I have for today's episode of Stay at Home Dad's Podcast. Yes, a little different topic today. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, I don't know a lot about this stuff, so if you'd like to give me some feedback or you'd like to add your two cents into my ideas, awesome. If you want to give me a complaint, awesome. Just shoot me a message over on my social media or over on podbean.com. Let me know kind of what you think. Also, on podbean.com, you can click a little button on my page there, and it says share, and it will allow you to share this show right to your social media. So, if you enjoyed today's show, if you enjoy my show as a whole, then please do that. Click that, share it with your friends, let them know that they can grab this podcast on all the big streaming platforms. It's on damn near every one of them. Anyways, thank you again so much for listening, and I will talk to you all again next week.